everybody, my name is Brian Ellis. I'm one of the senior developers here with Beslio, and today I'm going to do a technical deep dive with the Infor Visual 8 plugin. Uh, this particular plugin allows you to have complete interaction with your Visual 7, 1, and above environment uh, with bezels. Uh, today we're going to go through the process of creating a order entry bezel, uh, which creates an order inside a visual automatically. Um, all of this information is available on our GitHub page for the Bezlio plugins. And if you click on in for visual 71 slash eight, um, it'll take you through and walk you through the same steps that we're going to be doing today. Um, this particular video is going to assume that you've already been through the configuration and that you have a working visual eight plugin already. So the first thing that we need to do is understand a little bit better about how the in for visual uh, API works. And for that, um, you could use Visual Studio and you could load the DLLs up to look at the objects and the methods available inside of there. But I'm actually going to use an open source application called ILSpy to help us out. So I'm going to go and I just downloaded and ran the uh, executable and I'm going to click on open. And inside of your Visual 8 install directory, you'll see all the VMFG DLLs that are available. So things like purchasing and financials and inventory are all available out here and all fully integrated with Beslio. In this particular case, I'm going to use the VMFG sales DLL. So I'm going to click open on that. When I expand this out, um, you'll see all of the different uh, objects and then underneath the object, the methods that are available. So we're going to use customer order today. And you can see that there's a wide variety of different methods that we can use. There's load, uh, new order row, um, and save methods. We're going to be using all of those today, but you can also add lines and, uh, and delivery schedules and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so once we understand that we were going to call our customer order and the methods that we want to do, so for instance, load, we also need to know what the namespace of this, uh, what the, the namespace of this object is. And that you can see here. So it's lsa.vmfg.sales.customerorder. And then the methods are underneath that. So for instance, load in this instance, in this case. So what I'm going to do, um, I've got a configured uh, Visual 8 plugin already set up, and I'm going to go into Beslio. And I'm just going to use our custom builder for now. We're going to make, we're not going to put a user interface on it. We're just going to see the, how the interactivity works and kind of talk through the, uh, the, the steps in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and select the custom and select our custom designer and hit create. And I'm not even, uh, I'm not going to put a UI in here just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to our ng on init function. So as everybody who's watching this one should know, that's the first function that gets called whenever a bezel launches. And I'm actually going to go right to our plugins page here and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm actually going to copy uh, this the sample that we have out here and then I'll kind of walk through the different steps on it once I get there. So I'm going to paste it in here and the first thing it's going to do is uh, this is the name of the data source of the data service we're adding. Um, we're using Bezley Remote Data Broker, the Visual 8 plugin, and we're going to call execute BL method. For Visual 8 everything's going to be execute BL method. But this one's a little bit different, and I'll explain to that as we get to the parameter section. Now I'm going to update my connection. So I'm going to say that our connection is VMFG712. So I'm actually using a 7.1 environment instead of 8, but this works exactly the same way with 8 and above. And then for the business object name, I'm using that lsa.vmfg.sales.customerorder. So we got that from ILSpy or again from Visual Studio or you know from anything else and you can kind of figure out from this point forward what they are. It always is LSA VMFG and then it's the name of the object type. So if it's shop floor or whatever and then the particular object that you're doing. Uh, so we're going to use VMFG sales customer order. And the Visual 8 plugin is a little bit different. It actually allows you to chain to uh, to combine multiple calls into a single BRDB call. So in this instance, we're actually you can see for each parameter uh, that we're calling a separate method inside of that object. So we've got load, new order row, 
and a special one that's not available inside of the plugin called merge data set and then a save. Um, and then the value of each of these is a JSON structure um, of whatever the parameter types are. So if we look at this, load is taking a single string. In this case, we're just stringifying a, an object with a single string. Um, the same thing for new order row. If we look back at ILSPY and we look at new order row, it takes a single string as a, as a value. So we're able to, that's how we're able to chain multiple things together. So when this runs, it's actually creating a new instance of this object on the server, running load, running new order row, running this merge data set, which is something custom, and then running save. The merge data set is gonna be an important piece to this because the merge data set is, um, it allows you to pass an object, uh, like a table data set, into the plugin, and it's going to replace the values inside of the server side uh, transaction set with the values that we put in here. So in this case, um, the first thing I'm going to do is call load. And if I passed a value in here, it would actually load an existing order. Because I'm leaving it blank, it's going to, uh, it's going to just load up a blank data set. Then I'm running new order row. And I'm specifying the order ID is this, uh, you know, this value here. In the visual.net uh, API terminology, um, that means that it's one that's going to be auto-assigned. You can see examples of this in the visual.net uh, samples file. Then I'm going to run merge data set. And what I'm going to say here is, all right, well, we want to update our customer order um, from doing this. And the customer ID, we're actually going to make ABLMAN, so Ableman. Um, this is the visuals kind of default database, so uh, you're probably familiar with that. And the site is MMC. And again, we could go through and continuously add, you know, more things that are in the order header. Um, if we ran a couple new order line rows, we could add line information in and do all of that right inside of this merge data set where we're pulling everything together. And then the last part is we're gonna call our save function. So it's all really easy here. Um, and I'm actually gonna add one little, one extra piece here. I'm gonna just uh, create a little, little variable here called var.loading, and I'm gonna set that equal to true. And that way we can just see some, you know, as it's waiting, uh, we can have a little bit of an indicator there. So I'm gonna hit verify. And once it comes back, it's made sure that our syntax is correct. I can hit save and close. And I'm gonna say on data change, um, if I look back at here, our data set was called create order. So I'm gonna come into here and edit our data change and say, if bezel.data.createOrder, so if we have a value that's returned back, uh, then our bezel.vars.loading is equal to false. So that way, um, and then I'll verify and save that. So if you look at our ng on init, when we start, that was actually vars.loading, when we start, we're gonna set a loading variable equal to true. We're gonna call our create order where we're running all of these different methods. And then on data change, when we get a, a response back from the server, we're gonna set that uh, vars.loading equal to false. That way we can just have an indicator for the user uh, that something is going on. Now, obviously you would wanna have a, a user interface around here where users can select the customer and do all that kind of stuff. Um, in our recipe book, we actually have a fully integrated order entry system with Visual 8 that you can use out of the box. Uh, but now I'm gonna come into here and we're gonna use our markup snippets to show the different things that we have, uh, that, you know, that we have going on here. So first thing I'm gonna do is just grab this loading uh, bit here and we're gonna change the hidden flag to be our bezel.vars.loading. Uh, so that way, whenever it's running, it'll, it's going to go ahead and uh, show us a loading indicator um, and it'll hide itself when we're no longer loading. Now, if I come into here and come to the end over here, 
I can, I'm gonna just drop in a raw data view. So again, we would make this look a lot better, but all we're doing right now is just kind of showing how the plugin works. So it's gonna be bezel.data.createOrder was the name of the data service that we got. And we're just at using our raw data view. So all we're gonna do is view the output of it. So if I look at, um, if I look back at our ng on init here, you can see there's the create order. So everything should be good here. I'm just gonna give this a name really quick and we'll call it VE8 order creator. And I'm gonna save that. And I'm gonna hit preview. So the first thing you're gonna see, there's our loading indicator. So we added that and obviously I'd wanna make that look better and you see that it disappears as soon as this data comes back. And in that amount of time, it's created a new order in visual for us. So you can see that all the information, it tries to fill in based on the customer info that we passed in there. And if we go scroll down here a little bit, you can see that there's an ID set up. Um, so it's created a new order. Um, and then from there, you know, we could fill in any additional information you want, create new lines, do anything like that. Uh, but it's, you know, we try to make it as easy as we can to work with. Um, this works for, like I said, both document types, so like create order as a document type, but also any kind of transactions. So you can do inventory transactions, movements, work order receipts, anything like that. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, feel free to leave any comments. We'll try to answer anything we can. And uh, thanks for watching.